what does taxonomy mean uh, when it comes to Drupal? Um, well, the best way to really explain about taxonomy and how useful it can be on a Drupal site is really just seeing an action. So why don't we go ahead and do that? What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new piece of content here. I'm just going to go ahead and create a new article. Um, and let's make this article, let's say this is, let's pretend we're, this is a band website and we're, we're writing an article about how um, we're creating a new video, new video in the works. There we go. And so let's just add some dummy text in here. Go ahead and yeah, there we go. Um, you'll notice we've seen this before, but we've kind of glossed over it in the past. Tags, the whole idea of tags. And in the past, what we've done is we've just kind of put a different, uh, a bunch of different keywords that more or less describe the content. So watch what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to go say, and I'll say videos, because uh, this article is presumably about a new video that we've created. How about um, uh, news? And then, uh, I don't know, let's just stick with video and news. Let's, let's stick with that, okay? So what I've done here is I've entered a comma separated list of words to, to describe the content. If I had a term that, that included two different words, like let's say, oops, let's say band news, um, I would basically, I can put that um, together and just separate all the different keywords or key phrases with commas and Drupal will recognize that as a, as an actual single phrase. It's not going to separate out the word band and news. So that looks good. We're going to go ahead and save that. I won't bother adding an image or anything. And we'll notice, and we've seen this before, um, but we'll notice as soon as this gets published, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here, the way in this default view, okay, we could edit the way this looks, but in this default view, we see that Drupal adds a line at the bottom here with tags. And this is nothing new. You've seen this before, probably on many other websites. Tags here, and we see that each of these are links. We've got a tag uh, called videos, a tag called news, and a tag called band news here. Um, don't, never mind about that being a little redundant. This is just an example. Um, what do you think would happen if we clicked on one of these? Okay. Well, the intuitive, you know, the intuitive answer here is that if I click on one of these, uh, I expect, anyways, anybody who's used the web often enough, probably expects to be brought to a page where any content that has this tag will be listed there. So let's give this a shot. I'm going to go ahead and click on Band News. And sure enough, we see, and this is, if you remember from before, this is actually the teaser view, okay, which we can edit that as well too. We see every article that we've published on this site that happens to be tagged Band News shows up here. And then we see this article that we wrote a couple weeks ago, welcoming Jane, our new guitarist. And here's our new article we just wrote now, new video in the works. Okay. Um, and likewise, I could click on videos, I can click on news, and if there are other articles on this site with that tag, it's going to put them in a list like here. And and I can I can edit the way this teaser looks. I can put less text. I can put more text. I can change, you know, the location of the image, all sorts of things like that. So why is this useful? Okay. The reason this is useful is that this is yet another way that your user can interact with the content on your site and, and navigate through the content on your site. We tend to think of, you know, when we, when we're just, when we're not used to web development, when we're not used to designing websites, we tend to think, you know, it's hard for us to imagine how people actually interact with your content. You know, the obvious thing would be, oh, they use the search box. Well, not everybody does. Some people do, some people don't. Um, the other thing too is that using a search box sort of depends on you knowing what it is that you're looking for. Okay. Um, whereas if I'm in the middle of reading this article and I see down at the bottom, oh, videos, I might not have thought to do a search for videos. And so for me to be able to just click on this, now I'm suddenly interested in the possibility of seeing any other news that relates to videos. So it's a way to sort of trigger behavior in the user, um, but behavior that they want, and they still control what they click on, obviously. Um, the other thing you might think of in terms of navigation is even if some people are search dominant users, they'll use the search box a lot. And some people really just like to navigate through things. And so they'll be clicking on these links up here. But for obvious reasons, you can't have a link up here to every single page on your site. That would just get really out of hand. Um, you have your main content up here, but then as people explore the content on your site, the expectation is that if they are now interested in learning more about these other topics, then they have the opportunity to click through on these tags here. 
Now with that said, it is possible to create tabs up here that will have that, that will basically be like a predefined list of, of content that just maybe are just tagged a certain way. Um, so, I mean, but that's that's a little beyond what we're what we're doing in this screencast. What I just wanted to do was introduce this concept of taxonomies. So the the technical answer to the question, what is a taxonomy, is that really the taxonomy is just a practice of classifying content. And so therefore using tags, this is an example of taxonomy in Drupal. And in Drupal in particular, taxonomy is what allows you to connect different pieces of content together, how you can basically create relationships between them you can classify all the content on your website and this is more important than you think um, a, a site that is well designed a site that people find easy to use invariably it's because the content it really is connected together in a logical and intuitive way and usually that's because the designer the developers actually spent some time thinking about okay how are we going to make things connect to each other so how do you go about managing all this taxonomy, all this tagging and categorization and classification of the content? Again, you click on the structure button up here because structure is our favorite menu item. And down here, we'll see, this is the one that we haven't seen yet, taxonomy. And this is, right as, it, as Drupal is telling you here, this is where you manage tagging, categorization, and classification of your content. And so you would click through on there and we'll see in here that we currently have one vocabulary and that's how Drupal organizes all the taxonomies on your, your website, all the methods of categorizing content. It allow, Drupal allows you to create and have different vocabularies. And in this case, we the default vocabulary that's available to you is this vocabulary called tags. Well, that's not terribly surprising. We know what tags are. We've already been using tags. If I were to actually list the terms in here, guess what we would see? What is this? These are all the tags that we've used so far on our site. And you might be wondering, how did Drupal know? Well, Drupal's pretty smart. Every single time you add a new tag to a piece of content, Drupal adds it to this catalog of tags here. So it's very smart. It keeps track of all of that for you. And then, of course, if I were to click on, we've already done this, but clicking on Band News brings you to a page that only lists that tag. So you see how this is a really cool way of managing uh, relationships between content, managing the navigation between related pieces of content. And that's really, you want people to be able to do that. You want, you want it to be effortless list for your users to be able to surf through various pieces of content according to what their interests are. So in the next uh, screencast, we'll work a little bit more with tags and we'll see what else we can do with, with different taxonomies and creating new vocabularies. But for now, this is a good intro, hopefully, uh, to what the, I, the idea of a taxonomy and seeing it in practice here with the use of tags right down here. We understand how to do this. This is really nothing new. It's just, the, it really, it's just, you know, the, the terms you need to get used to. That's all. Okay, so that's it for this particular screencast. I hope that that was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.